Hello and welcome to the Rock River Valley Traction Company. In this video, we're going to take a look at Catenary, how it's constructed, uh, different different little uh, notes about it. Uh, so maybe some of you are thinking about building something like this. I've uh, got a few little pointers. But first, let's look at uh, some tracks. So we've been changing out some ties over here. I uh, had a lot of bad ones uh, in this one spot. And also, uh, I found a couple of sticks of 25-pound um, rail that were banana-shaped. How they got that way, I don't know. Uh, but I was able to straighten them and uh, put them down here on the straightaway. So the 12-pound rail was replaced with some 25. I think there's some 20 here as well. Uh, and to straighten rail like that, it's, it's uh, bent pretty badly. Um, I don't have a press out here, so I do it the easy way. I take a, take a chop saw and I just cut, cut through a little ways. You see I got another chop right there, one right there. Uh, and then you can just uh, basically bend it with your hand, get it to where it's flat, and then I go back and weld up the gaps that I made with the saw, and voila, straight as can be. But uh, in the process of changing out the rail, I found a lot of bad ties. And uh, let's look at some of these dandies that I pulled out. And there's just nothing left of uh, some of these... I don't know how long they've been in here. Quite a while. Look at this. Old uh, cross-arm braces. That's what most of these ties are out here is uh, cross-arm braces from utility poles. This one was actually uh, probably came off a rail line somewhere. It's got, got a whole bunch of insulators on there. But uh, yeah, then I came back and added some rock down here. Uh, got the track all uh, surfaced and it rides really nice much better than it did before um, so anyway why are we talking about track anyway let's talk about Cantonary so uh, out here uh, the poles I think the poles are spaced I don't know what they're spaced at honestly I just look at it and say yeah it looks like about the right place for it I don't know maybe uh, maybe 15 20 feet something like that um, I use uh, two by twos for the arms and this one I don't know if you notice this but uh, the wood dimensions these days just they just keep trimming the wood down smaller and smaller so this is supposed to be a two by two which you know one and a half by one and a half is what you get but these things are actually now uh, one and a quarter by one and a quarter and look at it it's like like a wet noodle already. It's only been up here for, I don't know, six months or something. Um, cheap lumber. I'm going to have to start uh, ripping uh, two by fours again, I guess, to actually get wood that's strong enough. Uh, if you look at this guy back here, he's a, he's a true old one and a halfer. Nice and straight. Look at that. Been up there for years. They don't make them like they used to. That's for sure. But, uh, so the poles, uh, I just use whatever I can find, you know, old utility poles, what a lot of these are out here. Some of them are actually 4x4s and 4x6s. They work okay too. 4x6s are more ideal. The 4x4s I've found um, don't always stay straight long term well, with that weight hanging on them. But a 4x6 works just fine for a pole. Um, the wire out here is... I try to keep it at 8 feet from the top of the rail. That's kind of ideal. It's just out of arm's reach, uh, but not so high that you need to put a ladder on top of a car to reach it uh, when you need to make repairs. So, uh, yeah, about 8 feet from the top of the rail to the wire. And then the wire is, uh, I don't know if this will focus, but um, it's just 3 8 inch diameter uh, galvanized wire rope. And this wire, I don't know when this was originally put in, but it's 
it's been here as long as I've been uh, out here working on this. So, uh, if I had to guess, this wire probably dates back to the 50s or 60s. And it's still holding up just fine uh, for the most part. Um, so, to support the wire, there's, uh, there's the, the, the 3 8 uh, wire rope. And then there's two messenger wires, and they're a smaller diameter um, fence, like uh, fence wire, electric fence wire. A lot of times, this some of this stuff, like this, is some really old, uh, heavy duty steel wire. Been here forever. Um, but the point of the messenger wire is to help support the main wire, and also. To give it more stability more lateral stability um, so without a messenger wire you would have to keep your catenary very taut which you can see in the uh, mainline um, electric railways they they keep the wire very tight um, and they do that with some very large concrete blocks that hang off of pulleys and um, pretty cool I you know I wish I could do something like that here but honestly this is this is just a lot easier to maintain because you don't have to deal with all the, the weights and stuff um, so yeah just uh, the messenger wires run above the main trolley wire and then uh, these are the hangers and the hangers are made out of copper weld you don't want to use regular steel wire for that because um, you will have a, a reaction between the, the steel wire and the, the cable and it'll it'll rust the, the braided cable I've seen some places out here where it's just uh, regular steel wire and it's about ruined the um, 3 8 uh, wire rope cable because of uh, galvanic corrosion but uh, so this is copper weld, uh, these right here, and what that is, it's a, it's a hard steel wire that has a copper coating on the outside. Um, it's used for um, like uh, the old uh, telephone lines and stuff were, were made uh, out of copper weld. Um, so it, it's not a super hard, like spring wire hard, but it's definitely harder than just uh, regular steel uh, fence wire. So you gotta have a pliers or something if you wanna put a permanent bend in it. Um, so uh, what I do is uh, to put one of these hangers in here, is I've got a little tool that I made and I'll try to show you this tool. So so here's here's the little, little tool. And um, I don't know if it'll focus, see if I can find a way to make this focus. Anyway, the tip it's just an old screwdriver that I ground down, basically, and the tip of it is very sharp, uh, and then it has a very gradual taper, and then uh, if I turn it sideways, you can see it, it gets wider. And so what I do is I take this, if I'm going to put in a new hanger, I'll take this and I'll put it right in between the lays of, of the cable. I know this doesn't focus very well, but anyway, I stick it in there and then push, push up like this. And what that does is it creates a split like you see, like you see right here, there's a split in the wire. So you get it in there, you get your split and then you turn, when you turn it sideways, then that opens the wire. All right. And then at that point you can take your piece of uh, copper weld and you stick it through the opening that you've created with this tool. Uh, get it uh, roughly centered, you know, your piece of wire. And then you take this tool out. And then you can put these twists in here. Now these twists are very important because they, they make sure that the, um, that the hanger goes up high enough and can't spread. Because uh, if this spreads, this spreads then it'll get caught in the shoe you know because the shoe is only so wide so if the, if the hanger is spread too far then the shoe will catch it but by putting some twists in there 
you raise that up it can't spread and now the shoe glides right through there and then at the top we just put a wrap around the messenger wire you don't want it tight uh, you want it to to float freely all right um, if it's tight what will happen is as your messenger wires um, as the tension changes on them it'll if these are hooked securely to it then it'll yank them you know one way or the other and that also will cause uh, dewire problems so uh, nothing too fancy about how this is constructed I mean it's just uh, like I said 3 8 uh, braided uh, wire rope galvanized and then this copper weld uh, wire for the hangers and then some steel wire or whatever you have for messenger wires ideally the, the copper weld is great for messengers but I don't have enough of it to do the whole line and the steel wire works just fine uh, for the uh, messengers and then basically the tension is handled by uh, so at every curve these messenger wires kind of dead end um, at the curve and of course the braided steel cable continues on around um, so I can tension the messenger wire at the curves more or less I do have uh, intermediate points like on this straightaway there's probably I don't know five or six places where the messenger wires have uh, joints in them and you know I can I can tension them at those places where there's breaks and they're joined together uh, if if they get too loose honestly the wire tension hardly ever needs adjustment once you have it pretty well set it it stays there um, of course when a tree comes down and knocks the wire down or something stretches the wire like that um, it does change and and through the seasons you will notice that in the summertime your your catenary gets kind of sloppy and in the winter time it's pretty tight um, and that's just thermal expansion and contraction of the wire um, I don't I don't think the, this shows it but there's a little bit of a droop in the wire um, and that's that's normal uh, the biggest thing though is the the messenger wires keep it from doing this as you're going down the track it's kind of swinging side to side and because there's not a lot of tension on on this wire if you don't have your messengers kind of taut then this will get to whipping as you're going down the track and uh, it'll throw the pole off so um, the other thing that these uh, messengers do is is keep the wire from you know turning like this so it, it, it keeps it straight so when the pole pushes up you know when the pole goes or the shoe I should, should say when the shoe passes uh, down the wire it's you know because there's tension it's pushing up and uh, these messengers help support that and they keep the wire straight and they keep it from going side to side so let's look at a curve Here we are at the curved section of track and the first thing that I will point out is that the poles around the curve all have uh, a wire running around the back side of them and you can't see it because it's so small but you can see the insulators that are hooked to it right there right there and that wire goes around the back of that pole and it goes over to the next pole and you can maybe see the insulators right there and another insulator right there so those insulators are tied to that wire and it's basically what controls the position of the trolley wire uh, in the curve now I'll also point out that that wire that runs behind the pole that those insulators are hooked to comes over here and there's a spring in it all right before it's hooked to the pole now that's because uh, due to thermal expansion and contraction uh, the trolley wire is always you know getting longer or shorter and um, the curves 
are kind of where that's that uh, slack gets taken up uh, if you don't have a spring in there what will happen is uh, the wire will get extremely tight around the curve in the winter time and in the summertime uh, it won't be very tight so that spring helps to take up you know between the seasons uh, take up the slack now another thing that I do is all the poles that are on the curves have a wire you can't see it again because um, it's just too small but uh, I have an earth anchor down there and then a uh, wire right here comes up and it ties to the top of the pole so that uh, there's always a uh, you know an inward force on these poles and so that keeps them straight having that uh, earth anchor in there now you'll notice the position of the wire it's important here's here's the catenary wire it's important that it is uh, over the inside rail inside rail of the curve um, because when the car goes around the curve uh, the pole swings out and uh, if you center it then it's it's really it's too far off it just it doesn't look right going around the curve uh, if you put it over the inside rail it follows it perfectly as if you were on a, a straight piece of track now where each of these insulators is at there's one and there's another one uh, basically the more pull-offs that you have they're tied to the messenger wire really hard to see with all the trees and stuff but here's here's one right here I'm at one of these insulators and it's tied to uh, the messenger wire and it pulls it pulls the uh, trolley wire over so that there's no sharp hooks in it uh, if you don't have enough pull-offs then your wire uh, you know it always wants to go straight so you got to you got to pull it off to make it curve and if you don't have enough pull-offs then you end up with these kinks where you do have a pull-off and you try to go around there too fast and it'll throw the, the pole right off um, your your shoe will just you know it'll try to keep going straight when it gets to that kink um, so I've got this one this curve is it's pretty uniform I just recently reworked this one, so it's probably in the best shape of any of them out here. Um, so the other thing is that this this wire that runs uh, behind behind the poles, it kind of sets the height of your wire. Uh, a lot of the curves out here don't even have any cross arms like this. Now this this particular curve has got cross arms in it, but not all of them do. And you technically don't even need them um, because you can use your pull-offs you know the weight of the catenary wire you know it's as it's trying to fall to the ground these pull-offs are trying to hold it up and um, just because of that the wire will stay suspended without any cross arms uh, if you want it higher you just lift you lift this backing wire back here uh, lift that up and that changes the angle of the insulator so instead of being like this it might might go like that and that'll lift the wire up you know if you need it higher so uh, curves are a little tricky they, they definitely take more to maintain uh, and to get it right the first time you know generally whenever a tree comes down somewhere uh, the curve is what ends up eating up the slack or the the wire that's needed uh, when the tree takes the wire down to the ground um, and so it ends up coming out in, in a curve somewhere and you know once the curve gets out of whack then you got to come back and and retention you know these pull-offs every so often um, to get it back to where it's you know, over the inside rail so um, most critical part to maintain but um, generally once you get it in as long as nothing disturbs your wire there's there's no maintenance to it um, unless your poles start to you know if they lean in 
uh, that obviously changes everything. So that's why I use the, the earth anchor and the pull off to keep them straight. And you don't even really need these insulators. The only reason I put them in here is because they, they are from the North Shore, so they're uh, authentic um, insulators. And it keeps my pull-off wire from being energized. So that way, if I need to climb up the ladder and, and move it higher up the pole to raise the curve up, then I don't have to worry about it being uh, energized because right next to it, I don't know if you can see right at the tip of my finger, that's where the earth anchor wire, so that's ground. And then you would have a hot wire right next to it. And, you know, that's not a good idea either. Um, if the wind blows and shifts it down uh, into that ground wire, then it would create a short circuit. So I try to keep the pull-off wire insulated. Um, so, yeah, that's... That's about it for the curves. Uh, let's look at some splices. Here's one type of splice that's used. Uh, this one is uh, very crude. It works actually really well for uh, as crude as it is. Uh, <laughs> so you can see this is the uh, main wire right here coming in and it comes up through here. Uh, and then it, it just sort of loops. This is just extra wire here. Uh, and then the other side comes through here and it goes and dead ends there. So uh, if the wire needs to be tightened, uh, just loosen the saddle clamp and tension the wire with a come along. Uh, and there are some little screws here. Um, these actually, they don't really hold the wire all that much. It's more for pushing it down because um, you have to have a good transition here. If this, if this wire goes up too uh, sharply or abruptly, uh, or if there's too much of a gap between the splice and the wire, uh, then what will happen is the shoe will catch on that and you'll have a D-wire. So, uh, yeah, not much to it. I mean, it's just, it's just some round... Uh, I don't know what is that maybe maybe three eighths uh, diameter round stock <laughs> it's actually a bolt it's an old bolt you can I don't know if you can see that but there's actually threads on this end so it's made from an old bolt and then uh, there's another bolt welded on top of it and then those nuts are attached uh, and that's what the wire feeds through so very very basic very simple design but uh, works really well I'll show you the how a shoe uh, traverses through this so here's here's the shoe comes along and rides right across there get another little look at that coming through and uh, this one we never dewire at this one it it works very well all the time and since I showed you how that uh, shoe goes through the wire I might as well take a second and talk about uh, trolley shoe design so this this shoe here it's probably I think I made this one about 25 years ago um, it's made out of stainless steel, actually. Uh, what I did was, is I uh, just bent a piece of stainless steel and uh, I took a TIG welder and I filled the bottom. Now you can see that this thing is actually really grooved out. You can see where this is the original height of how this thing used to be. I guess I need to fill this in. It's really worn out. Um, so I just filled it with a filler rod and uh, what's really important about these shoes is, is that they have, to, they have to move very freely in all directions to compensate for uh, changes in the wire. Uh, for the shoe, or like the uh, splice for instance, um, if this thing couldn't tip, it would just snag. Um, and another crucial feature 
is these ends being bent. You have to have a really good lead in um, so that if there's any obstruction in the wire, it will just sort of push it out of the way. Uh, kind of like a snow plow. Um, so this lead in keeps it from snagging on anything. Um, and then like I said, it's gotta, it's gotta rotate freely. Now, all the shoes out here, um, they have like a quick release. Uh, so this is just a piece of square tubing and uh, I'll show you how it attaches to to the pole. So here's our here's our trolley pole and This just Slides on like that. You know, it's, a, it's a loose. It's a loose slip fit and the reason for that is uh, If you do snag something on the wire you want this to just break away and and fall off or get you know if it's hung up in something it'll just stay hung in whatever caught it um, if if you don't have this uh, what can happen is is you'll take down a whole bunch of your cantonary uh, if you snag something and we've had them lock up before um, and we've taken down poles and all kinds of wire and it's just a big mess um, so quick release also, the, the pole is a quick release too, so it's kind of quick release on both ends. Um, now this tensioner, uh, this tensioner is also home built. Uh, I made it when I made this uh, steeple cab locomotive, but basically it's just, it's just springs, uh, just springs and, uh, and pivot point. Now this one, let's see if we can see it here. So this one has, I uh, made it with an adjustment so that the tension could be adjusted easily. And that's done uh, right here. So this whole device right here is on a slide. And if you tighten this nut, then it, it pushes this up and puts more tension on the springs. So right now, so it can actually slide back probably from here and it'll go all the way up here. So it's kind of in the middle uh, right now. And those are just die springs. Um, but you can see how everything flexes here. And it'll go basically, you know, I don't know, that's not straight up and down, but it's pretty close. So it goes up, it'll go up pretty high. Uh, one thing that'll really increase the reliability on your overhead is to have the wire height the same everywhere. Um, if there's abrupt changes in it where it goes up and down, then uh, if your uh, pole tensioner is not of sound design, it's not gonna be able to follow that. Um, so I've tried to, you know, between the, the lead in that that's on the, the shoe up there that's those beveled ends uh, between that um, the improved design for the tensioner and then making the wire height uniform all three of those things have contributed to uh, reliability improvements out here as far as d-wires go uh, also this you know this has to this has to turn very freely as well right here. you know because it moves as your as your wire moves off to the side of the track uh, you go around curves this this has to be really free otherwise any friction that's here um, just can pull your shoe off off of the wire you know, so, um, and there's nothing fancy it's just steel on steel there's a there's a washer under there it's not a bearing uh, and i just keep it greased and that's it's plenty good enough it works works quite well. Here we are at the uh, substation that's kind of in the middle of the big hill. And I'll just take a second to show you how that wire is connected to the catenary. Uh, so basically, there's um, 480 volts that comes in on this uh, big black. I don't know. Maybe you can't see it. Anyway, there's a big there's a cable right up there. And uh, it comes from the car barn, and it, it's 480 volts. And uh, it gets stepped down 
to uh, 240 here at this transformer and then uh, in here is a contactor that uh, isolates everything when the power is off uh, just to help with lightning protection and the output uh, goes to circuit breaker and uh, comes up here so to connect to the catenary I have these these are brass uh, little guys right here they're they're split uh, see there's a split right there and then um, these are allen screws in here and it's just it, it's a clamp um, and it goes over the wire see how that goes uh, and then you just tighten the screws down um, works great provides a, a nice connection into the wire got a large surface area uh, to carry a lot of current and then uh, my wire from from the, from the circuit breaker uh, it is just um, under a lug right here screwed into the top of this um, so there's an old style one uh, right here as well that's why I picked this one to show now this one you you turn uh, this and this is a tapered nut and it allows this piece here to spread open or close depending on how you turn that um, that one that one appears to be made out of steel or something um, I had issues with it um, every year it would kind of lose connection because it'd get rusty and uh, I'd be sparking away up there so I changed to this brass one I just left this because this is actually this is an actual uh, trolley hanger. I think it came off of the North Shore or something. Um, so it's kind of cool uh, to have an actual uh, prototypical uh, hanger there. Um, and it's it's fastened to the cross arm so it provides nice support for the wire. So why not leave it, right? Um, but yeah, that's how, that's how we get power into the wire uh, at each of the substations out here. For the final part of this video, let's look at frogs. Not switch frogs, but trolley frogs. So I've got this one here. This is the first one that I made. It's probably kind of hard to see with the sun. Uh, anyway, this one is driven by uh, two solenoids, and they are activated by a little, uh, more or less a switch on the rail. So it's a little piece of, uh, shim stock stainless shim stock stainless hardened shim stock I should say and uh, it's just bent uh, to be just above you can kind of see there's a little gap there between that and the rail and uh, what happens is whenever uh, the wheel contacts that it pushes it down makes contact with the rail uh, completes a circuit uh, which closes a relay in this box and that activates solenoid, which I'll, uh, I'll activate it with my foot here so you can see it work. Okay, here it goes. Bink. All right, and then there's a timer on it to let you get through uh, the switch. And when the timer times out, uh, as long as there's not still wheels on the switch, uh, then it throws back. So, uh, <clears throat> so basically, what I what I did when I made this was I took some uh, pieces of pipe. This is um, I think it's three eighths inch steel pipe, and uh, I had to drill it out a little bit so that the three eighths cable would go through it. And then at the end, I milled off the top of it grab this so here's the movable all right so it comes over so the bottoms are uh, you know flush with each other so the shoe travels through there without any trouble uh, and then the wire just comes out and dead ends here uh, so this is good I can use it for tensioning uh, the main wire I can pull it through there and uh, the other side 
so this is actually a um, piece of 3 8 round stock uh, when I when I did this uh, reroute project that's where we're at up here is on the, the double track bridge and uh, I was short here's the end of the wire and I only had to go that far so I uh, I used a piece of pipe or a piece of round stock and I welded it to this piece of pipe and um, brought the wire uh, through the pipe and then uh, saddle clamped it and then of course it's welded to the rod so it works fine the shoe goes right through there no issues uh, so yeah this this is a powered trolley frog now I'll show you the uh, the non-powered version so here we are at the non-powered trolley frog and you will notice that this catenary which if you can see it it's right there it's way off center of the track like way off and that is because uh, this frog is not powered so it it's built kind of the same way as the uh, as the powered one except there's there's no solenoid on it yeah just uh, force of the trolley pole brings it over and you can see how far off center we are and here's here's the track and there it is uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up to this now and uh, just show you how it's made all right I've rolled up to the frog the poles just about to enter that and um, you can see just how grossly off center this thing is so you got to go through this slow because if you uh, try to go too fast it will jerk the pull off uh, of the wire Let's get up here and look at how this is made so um, it's really simple it's kind of like the other one uh, used uh, pipe for the wire to come into and then there's a piece of rod uh, right here it's really hard to see in this light there is a, a little roller bearing up here all right so this just gets pulled over just the force of the pole moves this guy over when you go through it and then it's got a small spring on it which is up here see if you can see that and move this over just a little spring uh, put a jumper wire on there to carry the current through the bearing because there is a bearing in there uh, for that so yeah this is the non-powered the the issue with this one is that you you can't go through this thing at a high speed whereas the powered one um, because it's self-aligning you can blaze through that thing uh, without an issue so this one is simpler but you got to go slower the other one more complex but uh, in my opinion I, I kind of prefer the powered one but this thing works really well so uh, Anyway, as always, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe if you like the videos. Uh, hit me with any questions you have. Sorry for all the rambling. Hope you found it somewhat informative, though. But uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.